Hey guys, I'm back and we are playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Today we're going to be doing a copper drop stream. We're going to be checking out a free item that you can earn, but uh, you do need to put in a little time and effort if you want it. This is a challenge based reward. And again, limited time challenge based reward because it is a new event that they added with a recent playlist update. Let's go ahead and see what we're talking about. So recently they added the Blaze Up event uh, to celebrate uh, the upcoming 420 day uh, that is marked as kind of like a stoner day for potheads and the marijuana uh, society. <laughs> uh, so yeah, to commemorate the 420 event, uh, they they have uh, added this blaze up uh, event with all these challenges and stuff like that themed around a uh, uh, little uh, 420 action and uh, there are 11 challenges and once you complete the 11 challenges you will unlock a mastery reward uh, now we've already gone through all the challenges and completed them in a separate stream during the event stream I'll timestamp it in the description if you want to check out the event stream and see what the challenges are. Uh, but for the most part, these challenges can be completed in multiplayer zombies or war zone. You can choose. Uh, and as long as you complete each tier, you will earn the mastery reward once you've completed all the 11 tiers. So you can mix and match uh, based on whichever challenge you prefer and mode you prefer. And uh, you don't need to stick with the mode for all 11 challenges. You can, like I said, mix and match. As long as you complete the tier, that's what's important. And uh, yeah, that's what it is. I completed it all in uh, multiplayer. And I can tell you straight away that that might not be the best choice. There are a lot of the other challenges in Zombies and in Warzone that are significantly easier to do and less kind of stressful or annoying. Uh, so you might want to mix and match a little bit if you have the option so you can uh, maybe utilize some of the like easier challenges that will be less of a headache like right off the bat i can tell you like the two ones that really got on my nerves was the sticky nade one where you had to stick operators with the uh, uh like lethal and then the cooked grenade one where you had to cook a uh, uh, frag grenade or use a thermal barrack the both of them the main issue i had was like i felt they had too they requested too many of them with the sticky one they needed 10 and with the like uh cooked grenade or thermobaric one they needed 25. so what happened was a lot of the other challenges that were actually fun to do ended up getting to be a bit of a chore because i was dying a lot trying to focus on getting those two out of the way uh, my personal opinion would have been like if they had just reduced the number on these two challenges, it wouldn't have been that stressful. Uh, but also at the same time, you don't need to do these challenges in multiplayer. There are other alternative challenges in Warzone and Zombies. So if some of these challenges are irritating you in multiplayer or whatever mode you're choosing, maybe take a look at the challenge from the opposite modes and see if there are something more in line with what you might enjoy to do. Because, uh, yeah, definitely sticking to one mode might not be the way to go about it for any of the modes, honestly. I'm sure there are some bad challenges in Warzone, some bad challenges for the zombie challenges. So certainly mixing and matching the ones that you enjoy the most will be probably the smartest way to uh, complete this event. Once you do complete 11 tiers, you will unlock the mastery reward at Daymares for the SMG WSP Swarm. So let's go ahead and check that out. That is the goal for the stream, checking out the mastery reward. WSP Swarm Daymares Blueprint. Let's play the preview animation and get a closer look. Now this blueprint is animated, but uh, kind of a basic animation. Let's just put it that way. And uh, yeah, build-wise, honestly, like, now this is the second take, so I sort of know the build already. I can straight up tell you, like, build-wise, it is lacking in a specific attachment that would help it. Uh, and still, I don't think it is 
an optimal build even if you add that act attachment. Uh, so yeah, lacking in build a little bit, lacking in uh, you know animation, but uh, it is a, it is a nice looking blueprint. The animation isn't horrible, and I, I think more than anything, the animation falls apart a little bit when you put on the camo on it. But that being said, at least it plays through the camo. So there are pros and cons to this blueprint. Depends on you whether you want to put the effort to unlock it. I think visually it's a nice blueprint. It is a decent looking blueprint. It's not horrible or anything. It's fun. This blueprint comes with four attachments. Let's go ahead and check it out. You get the noxious short compensated barrel which is recoil control, gun kick control, sprint to fire speed at the cost of aim down side speed and bullet velocity and range. The hip shot L20 laser, hip per recoil control, hip fire and tax stand spread at the cost of light visible at hip. Aim ops V4 optic, precision sight picture. And then the WSP TAC 20 grip. Uh, tax stand spread, sprint to fire speed at the cost of flinch resistance, recoil control, and gun kick control. So the build is definitely built around hip fire tax stands and all that. Most of the attachments seem to be like uh, going for beneficial hip fire tax stands action. Uh, now I can tell you, like I said, I played with this, and the biggest issue with this build is the magazine ammo capacity. The Swarm has a really fast fire rate, and you'll burn through the ammo quite fast and it becomes problematic. So you have an open slot to do with as you please. My suggestion is right off the bat, consider putting a larger magazine. Straight up, that will help and probably make this build more enjoyable uh, if you want to maintain the visuals. Uh, yeah, just consider that. Uh, that being said, though, let's go ahead and check it out when you change things around, because you might want to do that. The barrel looks like if you change things around. Laser. Optics. Stocks. The blueprint's reasonably editable, but anything you add or change to it, it seems like it will sort of remove an element of the, you know, visual element of the blueprint. So you do need to consider that a little bit. But I think considering like the swarm, the main portion of the body is untouched whenever you're changing things, at least there's that, right? Ammunition won't change anything visually. Under barrels. Gotta remove the barrel if you wanna add a muzzle. The barrel does block off the muzzle attachment. So. Remove the barrel or change the barrel and then add your muzzle if you want. So yeah, that's the blueprint, the way you get it. And if you decide to change around attachments, like I said, I've already played with this. The biggest drawback to this is the magazine size. You want more ammo. You definitely want more ammo. This is the stats for the weapon. Movement speed's at 5.0 M-S.
this is the camera coverage. As you can see, the animation does play through the camera, which is nice. Solid color. You retain some of the blueprint elements and all. It, it's all right. The, the problem I have with the camera coverage is it feels like it's scrolling through the camera, so you can sort of see the blue of the old of the blueprint. I would have preferred if the green of the animation was just the animation and not it didn't include like portion of the blue while it's scrolling through it, right? It's a little weird. It feels a little bit uh, cheap as far as the animation goes because uh, it's sort of like clipping a section of the blueprint and then just playing it over the weapon as opposed to just being the green portion being animated. But it's all right, I guess. Zombies. This is the solid color, so we won't go through uh, checking that since we've already got this to preview it. Coverage for solid colors. I think because of the way the animation works, that blue like portion of the blueprint still coming through a little bit while it was playing the animation. I think blue base color blue kind of like camos goes best with it. Like this works better, right? Because it sort of hides that kind of blue kind of clipped section of the animation. But yeah, that's the camo coverage. Let's go ahead and jump in and play some games and try it out. Again, I, I did a first take on it, and I can tell you straight off the bat, the biggest issue with this is you want, you want a bigger magazine. That's all. I, I think that's just doing that would save this blueprint from being a chore to use. To something actually fun. Like it's not only like a matter of like being able to take on multiple enemies, but it also having the extra like magazine, like larger magazine, will allow you to stretch the range a little bit because you can fire a little longer. Hence, take on gunfights at a little longer ranges, and still get the kill. Uh, whereas in this one, you're struggling to get the kill at longer ranges. Even at close ranges, the magazine ammo capacity really only allows you to get one kill and then you have to reload, so you're constantly reloading. And the reload time is not great with this one. You don't have like a super fast reload time, so it does get kind of irritating to deal with. Like I said, I already did a first take on it, full take on it, so we might end up just keeping that, we'll see. I just want to see if I can try to get better gameplay for this nonsense. I mean, honestly, if I wanted better gameplay, the sure thing to do is just put the larger magazine. I'm almost positive that will help. But we will try it the way it is. I also tried it in tax stands and all, and again, in that situation also the magazine ammo capacity is kind of like, works against you.
Are you kidding? I should have healed up. No, man, what a shit spawn that is, dude. Yeah, no range on this nonsense. 
If I had more ammo, you know, you can just be a little more aggressive and just keep blasting. I want to suggest trying this in tax stands. Like, I'll be like, oh, I'll try this in tax stands in this next game, but I might not do that. Because like I said, I already did it in the first take and I can tell you, it's just not good. You need more, you just need more ammo. That's just the bottom line. And also like that optic, when you go into tax stands, it sort of blocks up a chunky portion of your view. So if you are gonna utilize this build as a tax stands build specifically, you definitely wanna lose the optic. I think more than anything, most of those attachments, you might want to like mainly utilize it in like hit fire. Yeah, if since it's stash house, maybe we will just do tax stands, just to show you. But you, even in close map mosh fit, like it really isn't viable. Like it's not. We, we'll use tax stands in this, just since it is a tax stands build, honestly. But like I said, it's just not. It's not where it needs to be. So you're like you're blocking a chunky portion of your view in tax stands, and you don't have enough ammo to like not. If you miss, you you in a detrimental position, right? Even the time to kill is not good, man, in tax stand.
I, I'm gonna stop the tank stance thing, it's just not worth it.
to stop them from taking me. Dude, teammate, what the f Flash myself. I was playing for the win on that one. Uh, I threw my life a lot just trying to get those points. I wasn't playing my life. I was playing for the dub ski. But yeah, tax, if I had sat on tax stands, I'd have gotten slaughtered. It's just not worth it. I was gonna see if I had Borealis, but I don't have it on this yet, looks like. Oh wait, I wouldn't have had Borealis. I'd have only had gold, the thing, if I had unlocked it. I haven't gotten to. <laughs> no idea unlocking Borealis. I don't even know why I bothered looking. This map won't play well with this weapon. Anything that like forces you to stretch your ranges out way too much, like for the bulk of your gunfights, this it's just gonna fall apart.
Like, the hip fire on this is pretty nasty. I'll give it that much. I knew I shouldn't have, I knew they were spawning, gonna spawn behind. I say it's cap shooting.
teammates were playing the hard point hard. <laughs> <laughs> I had to jump in at the last one just to like make my spam my time a little bit. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was helping. So yeah, that's the blueprint the way you get it and with the mastery camo. For the first build, now, I'm gonna actually change something around. In take one, I was kind of leaning towards a tack fire build, okay? So I was kind of leaning into this tack fire build and uh, I realized the only thing the gun actually needed was a 50 round mag. And then this tack fire build actually is pretty beneficial. I removed the optic because if you're going tack fire, you don't need the optic, right? So I went with this Bastion, Bruin angle grip uh, to add to the tack, uh, hip fire tack stands and then 50 round mag. But this time around, and it helped, it helped uh, for the tack fire thing. This would be the way to go about the tack fire build. Um, but for this one, I'm actually gonna maintain the blueprint exactly the way it is, but I'm just throwing on the 50 round mag. Because my theory is the blueprint is fine, build is okay, uh, but it needs just more ammunition. That's all it needs. It has the open slot, so this is an in addition to build while maintaining the blueprint. Yeah, it, it is a good tax stands build, like I said. And if you add that Bruin grip, it makes it even better. Uh, and you don't need the optic if you're going tax stands, committing to the tax stands build. But what helped the most was just having the extra ammunition. So even if you're stretching your ranges out, you're not worrying about running out of ammo. Or if you meet like multiple engagements, you're not worrying about needing to reload every engagement, right? So you kill one and then you have to run away just to like, reload and make sure you can get the second one. It makes like the tax stands build, like if you go into the small map marsh pit, it'll be fine. It'll be good. It'll be good enough. Uh, put on that brew and remove the optic, add the 50 round mag and you'll be sorted. But I think this blueprint is capable. Like, I think the attachments, I think, benefit fine for hip fire action. And you could potentially stretch the ranges out, may utilize that optic a little bit for the Dina line for a little bit more range action if you had that extra ammunition. So that's what we're gonna do with this one. I do think they were going for a tax stands build though. So I, I would actually recommend trying the Bruin attachment, removing the optic and throwing the 50 round mag.
No! Teammate, fit, where, where is teammate on that one? No, where was I looking, man? Now. That far out that 
nonsense spread. Why is this person spawning there? No, I thought I could do it again. Oh god. Counter UAV is being fueled. RTB at this time. Visual on the enemy. Why just move, man? I no way. Yes, more confidence with the ammo itself. You can take multiple, multiple engagements without warring. Blueprint's fine. It's all right. Just add the ammo. That's all. So yeah, that was the in addition to build. We had one open slot. We utilized the magazine, maintained the rest of the attachments. World of difference having that extra ammo. Alright, for the next build, we're gonna try it my build. This is uh, what I use whenever I use the WSP Swarm. I do use this uh, SMG as my main SMG, but I try to stick with smaller maps. Like, if you try to go into large maps, it's just obviously not gonna work out. Uh, H, the Hemrez uh, Mod Suppressor S, DR6 Hand Stop. 50 round mags, Marauder Grip, and then the WSB factory stock.
updated on this map properly. I, I really want them to add a 24-7 playlist for this map. Well, let's imagine progress. I don't want to like, they've got like 30 to 14. I don't even know what streaks they have. I just didn't want to try to run around a new map that I don't know. And I know that map has really long lines also. So I don't know how well SMG gameplay will play on it. Yeah, if they add a 24-7 playlist so I can learn it, I might be more inclined to taking the risk of being on a losing battle for that. Let's do Vista. This is another map I wish they had a 24-7 playlist, but I've sort of learnt it now a little bit.
What the fuck, teammate? You dumb shit. What the shit, man? was bad. I played badly. There's some good moments. But I died a lot.
So that was my build. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> It's a little uncontrollable, the build. I actually been debating on maybe adjusting it to have a little bit more recoil control as opposed to as much mobility as I've made it. A uh, tad bit more recoil control would go a tad bit further with this build. But I mean, I do like the build and for the most part, it's fun to use. And uh, I think that's fun and more times than not has a decent time to kill. So it works out more times than not. All right, for this last build, we're going to try out a guest build. And today's guest is uh, Gunner, or his channel is Sporting Entertainment. Uh, he does COD and sports like uh, live streams, and he does really long live streams. So if you're the type who just wants to have some, uh, you know, either COD action or some sports action playing in the background, uh, while you do your work or something like that, he's a really good streamer. Very useful having that. And he has been expanding his horizon as far as content goes, making shorts and uh, like video styled uh, content and all that. So yeah, definitely recommend giving him a check out. He has uh, been a long time supporter of my channel and uh, you know, long time streamer also. Uh, so yeah. Always appreciate whenever he stops by and says hello. Uh, so this is his build. He's a very aggressive player. He plays a lot of free-for-all and the small map mosh pit. So this build does sort of like lean into that a little bit. Uh, but it is also a very good build. Like I said, I've already tried it out in the first take. So I know it's a good build. Uh, Nider model 2023. FSS Fortress Heavy Stock. He uses the 100 round drum. So he rarely needs to reload. 9mm high velocity rounds. And then he uses the SA Shell Damper 99 suppressor. I don't know how to say that word. The 99 suppressor. Uh, so this is his build for the WSP Swarm. So we've thrown it onto the blueprint to try it out. I'm going to link his channel in the description. Like I said, highly recommend you guys check him out. And uh, yeah, show a little support if you don't mind. Because he is, uh, you know a streaming buddy of mine that, uh, like I said, supported my channel uh, for quite a while, as far as uh, viewership uh, goes. And he joins me in time to time, so he has played with me and also gaming buddy for sure. I'm going to play the small map mosh pit because uh, just utilize uh, his build there, I think it'll be fun. I sort of don't want to play shipment. Or rust, to be fair. Any other small map wash between. <laughs> on TDM, won't even get to play it. Mm. He does play the regular maps also and stuff like that, but, uh, you know, free for all action and a lot of small map action. Very aggressive player, so if you like that kind of like play style to watch, very exciting, you know, he's constantly uh, pushing and uh, going for those multi kills. Uh, 
Dude, why does everyone want shipment, man? If we get shipment again, then so be it. If I could cherry pick, I want stash house. Right now, with the way like the events going, shipment and all, just is. I mean, it's always bad, but it's extra bad with the event. <laughs> all right, so be it. It's too far gone. Dude, teammates, what are you doing, man?
Ah. Honestly, God, I played better in the first one with your gun. In the first take, I did better with your gun, but I, we lost. So this one, I guess we got the dub ski. <laughs> yeah, your gun's it's built like pretty good. It's pretty damn good. Like especially for the small map action, it works out well. It works out real well. Gunners build. Sporting entertainment is the channel. Link will be in the description if you guys want to check him out. Definitely recommend it. Gunners in the chat. Thank you. Stopping by. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, the builds are good. The builds, like I even said it last time in the first take, the build is really good. I highly recommend it. Um, well thought out, well put together, and extremely aggressive. It, in all, in all honesty, I say it's really good for the small map mosh pit, but the only reason I'm limiting it to the small map mosh pit is the 100 round mag. Uh, I think on the regular maps, like if you're just playing normally, you don't need to go this hard with the 100 round mags, but for the small maps, it's extremely valuable. Uh, but all the other attachments are amazing, right? So if I was to maintain this build, I would just drop the mag to like the 50 round if I'm playing regular, but keep everything else the same. But because of the higher engagements on the smaller maps, the 100 round is very valuable. And in all honesty, if you want like to just use the 100 round for the like regular maps, it'll still work out. It'll be good enough. But like sometimes, you know, with the bigger maps and all, like you have a little more time to reload and all. So just having that little bit of extra mobility 
uh, and uh, you know not taking actually the difference what is the difference between these two it's like 17 13 10 versus yeah so you'll have a slightly better movement speed and ADS and all that stuff uh, so that would be the only change I'd make. Otherwise, the build is really good. It's also really accurate, so it's easy to use and very aggressive. Like, actually, the surprising thing for me was, like, I was expecting the 100-round mag to make it a little bit slow. Like, I was expecting it to be not as aggressive. But every time I watch Gunner, every time I watch Gunner, he is extremely aggressive with this build, and it always like surprised me. I'm like, man, how is he so aggressive with that 100 round mag? Uh, in my head, it should slow you down so much, but it doesn't. You're still actually quite mobile and all, so it's actually a pretty good build. Even with the 100 round mag, you could get away with large ma maps and stuff like that. And it goes hand in hand with my biggest criticism for the blueprint, where, you know, having so little ammo from this blueprint build makes it hard to use because you're not confident that you can take on multiple engagements or stretch the range because you don't have enough ammunition. Whereas with the 100 or the 50 round mag, uh, you sort of can push those limits, right? So yeah, again, gonna thank you. Link will be in the description. Uh, check his channel out, I highly recommend. Like I said, I often just stop by Gunner's streams just so I can like uh, have something in the background while I do like my timestamps for the like videos or like just some basic work or if I'm cleaning up the room or jumping in the shower or something, you know, I have him playing in the background. So I, like whenever I pop my head into the thing, I have some high octane action going on, which Gunner always delivers in. So yeah, glad to finally utilize his build and uh plug his channel, give me a reason to plug his channel. And his build was not a disappointment at all. Blaze up event completed and mastery reward checked out. Uh, link will be in the description if you guys want to check out the event stream where I completed the challenges. Uh, now, I kind of briefly mentioned this, but I'm going to go into a little bit of detail. I actually had a miserable time grinding out this event, like properly miserable. And uh, I had decided I'm gonna do it in multiplayer and there was a lot of challenges. So I'm like, let's just do it in the small map mosh pit. Uh, but what happened was I was trying to like, like I said, do some challenges simultaneously, which in all honesty, you sort of need to do because there's a lot of challenges. And some of the challenges the ones I mentioned earlier in particular just are really like annoying. They're really annoying to do. Uh, the sticky one, it only requires 10 sticks with the lethal equipment, but that's still too much. It's just too much. Uh, I would have preferred this to be three. And then the other one that I got really annoyed with was the cooked grenade, the cooked frag or the thermobaric requiring 25. Maybe I should have used the thermobaric grenades. I think that might have been better because cooking the frags in the small map launch pit got me killed so much, right? So actively going for those two challenges just ended up becoming really miserable. And yeah, I I'm still going to stand by what I said in take one. And I'm going to say it again now because I'll crop that out. The challenges, these particular ones should have been less. And then I think it would have balanced out the event to be more enjoyable if you just want to do it in multiplayer. Uh, I think if the cooked grenade one was just five and uh, the sticky one was anywhere from three to five, preferably three. Uh, three stickies, three cooks, you know? I mean, five cooked grenades. These would have been a little bit better. So the challenge is there, but then you can sort of like focus on the other stuff while doing these other challenges, right? And then the other stuff, like if you're not kind of working on these ones, right? Actually were kind of fun. They were kind of fun and trolly and kind of went with this like 420 theme, right? So it wasn't as bad, uh, but yeah, those two in particular, I think were just poorly quantified as far as event goes. And if I had a suggestion at the very least, 
try to maybe substitute those ones for like either the war zone or the zombie challenge, whichever one's easier. I can't remember for each one of those. And then maybe consider the other ones depending on how you like it and etc. right? Um, yeah, I mean, arguably I could have maybe not focused on those ones and just enjoyed myself with these ones and then focused on those ones and then had that miserable experience. But again, it's because of the quantity required, 10 and 25, that you sort of, if you want to like even do it somewhat efficiently, you sort of do need to like combine some of those challenges. And that sort of ended up ruining the experience for the event. Uh, I don't necessarily blame the developers or anything like, oh, it's your fault for putting so many. Uh, I think, you know, quantifying what is a good place for enjoyment it not only is difficult, but it also varies from individuals and stuff like that. Uh, and also the timing, right? So maybe a normal play, these wouldn't have been so bad, but when you have the event going on and everyone's running EOD, trophy systems and stuff like that, it was a little excessive. I I'm gonna say one thing, the 25 is absolutely excessive. This one was definitely over the top for the challenge. I think five would have been fine. Um, the 10 one could have been like, I feel like could have been like miscalculated. And if, had they known like it was gonna be a bit of a miserable experience trying to get those 10, I'm sure they might have considered going less than that. Um, also the other thing is, like I said, I, I do think sometimes they are trying to make some of the challenges more annoying in one mode while easier in the other mode to encourage jumping from mode to mode, right? They might not necessarily want you to just stick with multiplayer the whole way through. They want you to experience all the modes a little bit, right? So I do sometimes think, yeah, that, that might have been the reason, you know, like they went stupid with one of the challenges just to encourage you maybe to try out the other mode in, uh, you know, thing. But... I get that, I get that, I, I, but just personally, I like multiplayer, so I wanted to do it in multiplayer. And just from my experience, I think those challenges did ruin the like event, whereas had it been just lower quantities, I probably would have enjoyed myself and had a kind of fun time doing some of these trolly like other challenges, you know? So yeah, that was my biggest gripe. Like during the stream, it was such a miserable experience, honestly, that, uh, I couldn't even think of it. Like I thought of this like after the fact and I was like, oh man, if they had just reduced those numbers, I probably would have actually enjoyed the other challenges a hell of a lot more. Uh, the other thing that got a little annoying was when you're doing these stupid challenges, particularly these ones, and the enemies aren't doing the challenges and they're just beaming you with like really OP weapons, it got a little bit more frustrating, but that's normal, right? Uh, that is to be expected that some people might just want to play the game to enjoy themselves and use the OP weapons, which is why I think the wiser alternative would have just been to reduce those numbers a little bit for some of the more uh, kind of annoying challenges. And uh, I wouldn't have minded some of them being increased. You know, some of them being increased, some of them decreased. Wouldn't have minded that. Although for the most part, I think most of the other challenges were in a good place as far as quantity wise goes. So not necessarily saying they needed to be increased in any other place, but those two definitely needed decreasing. So yeah, link will be in the description. I got slotted in a lot of the games while doing the event. So if that's your thing, that's your stream. Uh, me getting absolutely dutied on. WSP Swarm Daymares, it's the mastery reward. Uh, visually, it's a pretty nice looking blueprint. The animation's okay. Uh, I think more than anything, the animation falls apart when you add a camo. Um, but I do like the general appearance and the animation is appreciated for the most part. Uh, build wise, I, I've talked about it a bunch in the beginning of the stream. The build isn't actually awful. It is definitely siding heavier to like a tax stance hip fire build. And in hip fire, it is very good. It is very good. In tax stance, though, uh, it falls apart a little bit. 
And then if you're aiming down sites, it's equally falling apart. It, I think it falls apart more so in tax dance, actually, uh, when then aiming down sites, but both are weak, right? And uh, I was struggling in the first take to figure out what the hell is going wrong with this build, right? Because I thought maybe it's the barrel reducing the range. Maybe it's because it's this tax stands build. But then I tried tax stands and it didn't really work out very well. The bottom line is the build just needs more ammunition. That's it. That's all it is. If you have an open slot, and I would definitely recommend throwing on at least the 50 round mag or, you know, consider 40. Just increase the ammunition. Figure it out what is comfortable for you as far as ammunition goes, but increase it. And then suddenly the build becomes uh, so much more enjoyable uh, in both aiming down sights and tax stands. Um, again, if you're going heavy with the tax stands, then consider removing the optic and maybe throwing on like an underbarrel that like benefits it. Like I was considering the Bruin Bastion angle grip, I thought. And when I did try it out in the first take, it did actually like make a marked improvement in the tax stands uh, action. So having that Bruin, remove the optic, throw on the like larger magazine, and you're sorted for a good tax stands build. Otherwise, if you just want to play it normally and not necessarily go heavy on tax stands, but you want to maintain the blu blueprint, like I said, increase the magazine capacity because it is in desperate need of that uh, extra ammunition. Now, Blueprint is nice and I do like it uh, visually and stuff like that. Where it falls apart is the animation, actually. Uh, now, I'm going to just show it because, you know, this is the problem with the animation, I feel. Like, you can see, like, the scroll is just basically a cutout of the blueprint with the, like, new kind of, like, blowed, blown out a green section. But what happens because it's a cutout scrolling across the blueprint is you're getting the blue element of the like blueprint. So that blue portion of the blueprint is scrolling through and that feels a little tacky. Like uh, I think having that blue come through in the animation when you have a different camo, it looks tacky. I would have preferred it just to have the green blowout and just that part be the animation, right? So like I, I I don't know how it works in the camo stuff, but I presume it's very similar to like how photographs and GIFs work and stuff like that, right? On like computer. So what happens is when you have a layer that you're kind of animating over it, right? Like you have that played out animation, the background can be like transparent. So what I would have preferred, instead of having the full blueprint as the background of the animation with the, the blown out green, I'd have just preferred the blown out green section. And then the, instead of the blue, have like a transparent thing. So that way, just the green portion of the thing, animation would have scrolled through and you wouldn't have seen the blue while it was playing out. Now, obviously, when you don't have a camo on it, it looks fine, right? it looks fine when it's playing through because you don't see that blue portion as it's playing out. It's more when you put a camo on it and you see that blue thing, I feel like, oh man, this animation looks a little tacky. Uh, would have significantly preferred if the green section uh, was just the animation and it would be transparent, right? So yeah, that's just my like gripe with the animation. I feel like the way they did it was a little bit on the like lazier side maybe or because they didn't want to like cut out the like green highlight and just have the transparent background it was just easier to just put it on top layer the two like images and then kind of have that scrolling animation play out on top of each other right uh, but yeah unfortunately that does look a little tacky when it's on a camo obviously if you have a blue like blue base camo and then you have that animation playing through it's fine so like something like Borealis or, you know, it doesn't look too bad on that, right? But yeah, I, I think that was where like, uh, as far as uh, the animation goes, it kind of let me down a little bit. Um, I mean, the other thing that they could have done is layered it, right? So the blue be the first layer, the, then the base green be the second layer and then the blown out green be the third layer, right? 
And then what they could have done, which would have been interesting, is the camo just replaced the base blue. Okay, so you have the green, the base green still there, and then the blow not green animate over it. And then you have the camos that you, whatever camo you choose to put on it as the main background, blue background, right? So if you had those three layers and layer two and three had transparent uh, backgrounds and just had the green highlights uh, on it, whereas the layer three or the background layer would have just been the blue section, right? I, I think that would have been a more interesting way of layering this animation. I, I don't know, I don't know, like, computer programming i'm just talking for my background in photography that's how i would have done it preferably to have a kind of cleaner and cooler animation uh, and then you know having the camos take over the background only could have been an interesting way of like incorporating camos with the blueprint right so yeah just my thoughts behind it uh, visually it's okay though and i think not only I, but a lot of people love the swarm at the moment. You know, it's the go-to SMG for a lot of people because it's good in multiplayer and it's fun to use and it's exciting. Uh, so having a blueprint, uh, you know, for the collections always nice. Uh, and it's reasonably editable, right? Like I do think like if you change attachments around, it doesn't necessarily go with the blueprint, the black kind of base visual of the uh, default optics or default stocks and stuff like that but for the most part at least the main portion of the blueprint which is the body remains intact right uh, so reasonably decently editable uh, so not the horror not the most horrible thing to have in the collection at all uh, and even though I, I criticize the animation i think you know if you at least i i think that's more nitpicking uh, what I'm doing with the animation, criticizing the animation, is me just nitpicking at it. It's not me hating on it. I still like it, and I still think it looks reasonably decent with the camo. So it's kind of fun to have with the camo still. Uh, it's just me nitpicking, like, you know, this could have been better, but it's not horrible kind of thing, right? Um, yeah, it's fun. It's a, a nice little celebration for 420. Um, those of you who don't know, I'm sure most people know, but the reason 420 is a special like occasion is actually, I think, <clears throat> I'm not sure the exact location, but it's somewhere in California. I think it was near, uh, well, I'm not sure whether it was in California, but it was near uh, like a popular, either Humboldt or Mendocino or like, Maybe even Oregon, I don't know. But Oregon's not in Cali, right? So I don't know where exactly. But what used to happen was uh, there was this group of kids, right? These stoner kids in school. And school ended at 420 for them or something like that. Or close to that time. Uh, and uh, so the kids would just say 420. And that was kind of like a reference to each other. That let's go smoke up after school. Right, like let's go hit up like some, let's go do like a little smoke sesh after classes end, uh, and that's kind of where 420 like caught on. It was more the timing 420, and then because that got really popular, the date 420 became very popular uh, amongst the stoner community, right? To symbolize not only that special time of day 420, but that time of year, like the month uh, April 20th. And that's why like 420 became kind of like the kind of, you know, day for getting high, <laughs> I guess. Um, so, yeah, that's the background from 420. Those of you who don't know it, but yeah. My school used to actually end at 420 also. Like, so I'm, I'm not saying yes or no when I was in school, but uh, the the 420 concept made a lot of sense to me when it was explained also. <laughs> when I was in Cali in college, like 420 was also like big. It's been always big, right? Because of that, right? Like it picked up steam and that became popular. So what would happen in the medical stores is on 420, like I mentioned this, I used to have a medical license for my ADHD. 
so the medical stores, you could go hit them up and they would have these usually these big deals and stuff like that, like 420 deals. They'd either give you freebie stuff or they'd give you massive discounts and stuff like that. So what would happen with the medical community when I was there, and I presume now happens with the free, like the people who just, now it's like, legal right completely you don't even need a medical license but what would happen is dude a lot of people would go to each store in their area and hit each store up because to get the deals and the freebies and stuff on 420 but honestly when i was in when i was there i almost never like wholeheartedly celebrated 420 on the day uh i, I it usually just passed by me like and then when i'd go to the store then like a couple of days later, they're like, why didn't you stop by at 420? And I was like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> I already had I already had my stash. I didn't need to fucking restock, dude. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, usually because I, I was a regular, they would still give me the 420, like, freebie stuff and the discounts, like, even afterwards. They didn't care. They were nice to me. They were really cool to me. I used to spend a lot of money with for them, uh, with them. And the, the biggest problem with the U.S. pot scene is, like, it's mad expensive. It was, it was obnoxiously expensive, dude. So if you have like that habit, you you need to be pretty like well like stocked with cash. You need to be well off. Uh, otherwise, you'd be smoking the dirt, which is no fun. Yeah, it was a bit of a drain on the wallet. <laughs> In India, actually, it's quite cheap, uh, but not legal, and it's bad quality for the most part so extra not worth it in india but yeah <clears throat> that's uh 420 and uh, the event and the blueprint all summed up take two was the better take so we'll keep take two um yeah had fun enjoyed myself event like i said i think challenges some of them could have been tweaked to be a little bit lower and a little more generous with the the requirement as opposed to being so like you know intense and requires so many and kind of like became the buzzkill that it was trying to go for so many of those uh, but that doesn't matter because I still for the most part had fun hope you guys enjoyed check out my old streams if you haven't already and I will catch you later bye Yeah, take two, I think, was the better take and uh, showcase the blueprint a little better. But still, go for the larger mag if you want to maintain the blueprint. It'll help. <laughs>